Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we'll be discussing new feature in Dynamic 365, which is called Visual Scheduling for Production. Just to be mindful, this functionality has not been released yet. So if you're going to try this in your current Dynamic 365 environment, you're not going to see exactly the same functionality as I'm showcasing in this video. So I'm going to begin this demonstration by creating two production orders for the item D003, which has a bomb and route assigned to it. I'm going to click New Production Order. I'm going to select my item being produced in this case. We can see that the bomb and route information has been populated automatically. Uh, we want to set reservation to manual in this case. I'm going to set quantity being produced to 50 and for the delivery date I'm going to set it two days from today which is 17th. I'm going to click create. So we can see that the production order was created, it's 185, and what I want to do now, I want to pick a specific color to this production order that will be later used in visual scheduling. So let's pick a red color for this demo. So I'm going to pick red, click save, and uh, let's schedule jobs for this production order. So I'm going to click schedule jobs button and schedule direction. What do we want to select? We want to select forward from tomorrow please deselect that option and click OK to schedule the production order. Next step, I'm going to create exactly the same production order for the same quantity. Uh, quantity of 50. Reservation is set to manual. Uh, bomb and route information is here, so I'm going to click Create. And you can see that 186 production order was created, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to edit and make sure that the color we'll be using for this demo is going to be that green color right here. So I'm going to click Save and then Schedule Jobs. Same concept here. That I'm going to click OK. So as of right now, we have two new production orders being created and with status both scheduled. So next step, we need to run master planning to make sure we capture net requirement for these production orders. So I'm going to click Master Planning, I'm going to click Run. And under Master Planning form, I will select Static Master Plan. Static Plan here, uh, the duration, click OK. Might take some time, so I might just fast forward this process for you. So as you see, we got a two messages that operation was completed, Master Planning item coverage was updated. So the next step would be for us to go under workspaces and open a production scheduling workspace, the one that's called production for management here. So once you do that, make sure that the date is selected to the 17th, the date we are scheduled those production orders. Then click production orders to release. So in this grid, you will see two production orders that we've created, 185 and 186. So if I'm gonna to reference to the previous production order screen, we can see that these are the orders. If you see an exclamation sign against the production order, that means there is not enough material. So let's do this. Let's select both production orders that we've created and I'm gonna click on the chart button here on top. By default, this form is open in a resource view, so you're not gonna see any jobs scheduled in this view. To change this, we need to go to the chart section here and then click order view. The next step would be to make sure that the view is optimized to view material constraints for both production orders. To do that, we need to select chart section here and under setup, click views. Make sure that the show summary bar checkbox is stick to yes and the group initially collapse set to no. I'm gonna click okay after that. After I'm gonna click on the expand all button. So you can see that the time frame set here is in hours. So since the duration of our production order is set in days, so we need to change this view. In order to do that, we need to go to time scale form and make sure that we select dates and uh, we have a date interval. So I'm going to set it to 27 from, uh, let's say 16. I'm going to click OK. Now we need to enable material information on this chart. To do that, we need to click Chart, Setup, Content. And in this form out of production tab, we need to select Show Material Availability tick box to Yes. I'm gonna click OK. You can see now there is an exclamation warning to that 
job being scheduled because we don't have enough material to complete this job. This chart shows us the material is available on the 20th. So what I can do, I can manually drag this operation after the 20th and the exclamation sign disappeared. This is a really nice feature you can do for both production orders. So I'm going to do that. Again, the, since we have a granularity set to days, it's not really precise to move our scheduled job against that checkbox. What we can do to fix it automatically, you have to click on the job line, right click on your mouse and select an option schedule for material availability. This will automatically move your job. So I'm going to do the same for both and it automatically moves your job to the earliest possible date. There's another option that you can purport to automatically schedule jobs based on material availability. So if you select the job line, go under activity in the action pane, click under schedule jobs, and here you can select schedule direction for forward from schedule date as default. You can also select forward from material available date. So this will also move this job automatically. So I'm gonna move it back and perform the same action. Here we go. After done these changes, let's go and try to save this. So you can see we have an error message. Job violates the job sequence, job 10, 12, 12, 11. So the reason why it's been because we cannot really perform testing before we perform assembly. So now we have an issue. To, to automatically fix this, I'm going to select the job line, then go under activity and click schedule next job. So you can see that the system automatically moved linked jobs based on that original assembly. So I'm going to do the same process for the production order two. I'm going to click activity, schedule next job, and you can see it's been adjusted as well. So if now I'm going to click validate, you can see that now the chart is valid. So now let's try to perform similar actions, but for resource availability in the same chart. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to click on the chart and I'm going to click on the resource view. To see resource availability, we need to set up views first. So if you go under setup views, if from my order view, what well, resolved our material issue, I go to resource view, we can see that uh, these resources are in blue. That means that are available and the scheduling is good. However, under resource 1222, we can see that instead of a blue, we have a red, it means that the resource is over 100% capacity overbook. So the easiest way to fix this would be to drag my job next, and you can see that the line becomes blue from red. There is another option is to actually show additional resources that are capable to perform this specific operation. So I'm going to select this resource. I'm going to click under activity and show additional resources and the system will show me additional resources that are capable to perform the same action. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my first two. I'm going to click OK. And we can see that two resources that are able to perform these operation were added to the list. So what I can do now, I can simply drag and drop my process to the newly added resource. So I can add two here. So if I'm going to do move it again, it's going to fail. However, if I'm going to add this process to worker two, we still have a blue line here on top. In the case if you have long list of resources loaded to the chart, you can also schedule a job by clicking activity in the action pane, then click on a schedule job and select change resource check mark. And in this drop down, you will see all the resources that are loaded to your chart. So I'm going to change it to this. I'm going to click OK. And you can see that the system automatically moved the job to the resource that I've selected. Please subscribe and until next time.